The US tested a new intercontinental ballistic missile Tuesday. It was launched from an Air Force base in Southern California and sailed over the Pacific Ocean, landing eventually at an atoll almost 7,000 kilometers away. Then, just hours later, the Russian military tested its own ICBM-2. Although the launches have been described as routine, they come, of course, as fears grow over the potential for a nuclear arms race following the suspension of that key missile agreement on Saturday. RT senior correspondent Murat Gazdiev reports this morning. The INF Treaty was a pillar of global security, not only because it resulted in the removal of missiles and launches from Europe, but also because of what was removed. Short-range nuclear missiles, highly mobile, incredibly quick both to launch and their speed, much cheaper than huge strategic nukes. Everyone was always on the edge with short-range nuclear missiles around. They could strike in an instant, barely any warning. For more than 30 years, they were gone. But now those missiles are coming back, unless we get a new deal. Uh, I hope that we're able to get everybody in a very big and beautiful room and do a new treaty that would be much better. Not everyone wants a new deal. Some see this treaty collapse as an opportunity. More funding, more R&D, more, better short-range missiles. Now the Department of Defense will be able to conduct those research and development activities banned under the INF Treaty. So the Department of Defense will start those steps on building those systems they couldn't before. You can forgive the odd official with more ambition than sense, but the military-industrial complex, those guys that make and sell missiles, oh, they're ecstatic. Raytheon and Lockheed Martin wasted no time, and are soon going to be testing their prototypes, precision strike missiles with ranges greater than 500 kilometers. Withdrawing from the INF Treaty is a good start. Now this action must be backed by American firepower. The United States must regain the strategic advantage by expediting the development and deployment of a new generation of ground-launched missiles. It's incredible. They seemingly want an arms race a nuclear arms race, and that's what they're getting. Russia, which the U.S. accused of violating the treaty, promises to respond, develop new weapons. That is, not to say everyone's gone nuts. There are still people with sense, people that realize a nuclear arms race isn't going to lead to anything good. People who realize that arms treaties where the world removes, not adds nukes, is good for humanity. Yeah, I think it's stupid for the Democrats to be attacking uh, Putin on uh, all issues and not holding open the channel of nuclear dialogue. Yes, deal with the issues in Syria and uh, killing diplomats and, and Ukraine and Crimea and all the rest of that. But that doesn't warrant uh, a nuclear blunder that kills billions of people or millions. So, yes, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or somewhere in between, we need to have dialogue. And uh, something that might help is a bit of humility. I don't even know what's crazier nowadays, people cheering a nuclear arms race or people calling for dialogue. Some, many, want an arms race. And you know why? Because nukes a pretty. We see these beautiful pictures at night. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments.